Hi guys, Asmo here and today I want to talk about the character I've made for a little bit of an experiment. I wanted to test curse effectiveness and I found the perfect build for it and there are some great things and some really really bad things about this build so I think this is very educational and I wanted to share it even though it's a little bit of a failed experiment so here is the idea for the build that I had I figured out I can use curse effectiveness which can be found on these nodes for example you can find increased effect of your curses increased effect of your curses you can find even nodes that give you 10% increased effect of your curses which is huge so imagine you're getting like 10% 5% then you can uh, have like things like this monsters you curse are unnerved and intimidated so they take 10% more damage a lot of curse effectiveness you can also have um, additional like 25% effectiveness on this which gives you a couple more percentages on each of these jewels you can put another one here and in the end if you really wanted to like min max and go for voices you could go for like up to 300% increased curse effect then other uh, curse effect you have is coming from malediction so uh, an energy shield curse effect the little nodes uh, that occultist provides you can also get curse effectiveness from these nodes you can get curse effectiveness from these nodes so there is a lot of curse effect to pick up the the cluster jewel stacking is the most you can get and here was the idea of it right the idea was i'm gonna play cold dot occultist right and i'm gonna just f demolish the elemental resistances of the monsters so here is what i'm doing i'm using um i'm using frostbite which is like you can get it up to almost 50 percent reduced cold resistance for uh for enemies then elemental weakness which is another 40 right then we are also uh, using the void beacon which is minus 20 you can also uh, you, you don't have the helm enchant but that's because we're using heretics veil but if you put these curses into like a shield with reduced mana reservation uh, and and blasphemy right these these two curses and then another curse somewhere else you can al also actually get like minus nine to cold res on a helmet and then on top of that we're using elemental equilibrium and we have uh, tempest shield orb of storm storm brand reducing the cold re by 50 right so in, in effect we're getting like 50 50 and 50 or something like that like more than 150 percent elemental resistances shredded like completely because this uh, reduces the enemy monster monster elemental resistances which means it goes into negatives so you can have monsters with like minus 150 percent cold res it's an insane multiplier right because one percent resistance that's roughly one percent more damage so it's a crazy crazy multiplier uh other than that this is a lot of like the standard stuff that you will see on occultist we have glancing blows here for uh, the block so if you look at the defense uh we can actually without ro with roomies Ah, because I unspec these. Okay, I unspec I unspec these for cold. But you can have capped uh, attack and spell block. Uh, there is also really good uh, spot here for thread of hope, which allows you to pick up the uh, cold damage over time multiplier. Allows you to pick up wicked ward. Allows you to pick up uh, arcane focus, arcane arcane's dominion. All kinds of useful nodes. So this is really nice for cold dot occultist, uh, and just a bunch of energy shields so that we have a, like a dec decent amount seven k actually even 7k uh, so the the thing about this build like in practice how it works out is that in mapping it is so incredibly easy like immediately you can go into super high tier maps first day i was clearing t16s with with like i bought some gear first day t16s cleared also another thing worth mentioning is the where we get the additional curses right so we get um, extra curse from malediction extra curse from a chest armor which is very easy to get on uh, hunter's armor you just get a bunch of es and uh, additional curse it's very easy to get and then wind shriek uh, is really good for this build because we rely on blasphemy so the increased area of effect really matters because we run through the mobs and while they are still sitting in the vortex they are still affected by curse so they can explode with profane bloom even after we move a little bit right so that's why wind shriek is so amazing because of that aoe and also it's a very good pair of boots right we got elemental damage all elemental resistances 25 movement speed and additional curse on top of that super huge aoe we also get um 
Alls Uprising for uh, Malevolence reduces, uh, like Mal Malevolence reserves no mana. So I'm running Frostbite, Temporal Chains, Elemental Weakness, Malevolence, and Discipline. All of that, right? All of that, and I still have mana. Potentially, if I get more reservation, I could run Aspect of the Spider uh, to top it all off. And on top of that, because we have uh, one curse by default, this gives us a second one, this gives us third one, this gives us fourth one. We can also use Witchfire Brew for increased damage over time and Despair that also uh, enemies take increased damage over time. So huge amount of damage multipliers. You'd think that this just is going to just demolish all content, right? Because it's a fairly tanky build that also deals insane amount of damage while people are in the Blasphemy Aura. And let me show you. Let me go into some early zone to show you the range of the Blasphemy or else it's not that little. Uh, it's actually pretty decent. So as you can see, it's like almost the entire screen this way, right? So we can uh, we can curse all of these monsters and uh, really they take such an insanely like multiplied amount of damage. But here is where the build goes to shit. The bosses uh, unique monsters and bosses have reduced curse effectiveness. That means that the more you invest into curses, the less you're getting for it, actually, because more of your curse effectiveness is getting reduced. So here's what I mean. If you have a, a curse that, um, for example, reduces ele en en enemy elemental resistance by 40, right? And you get 100% curse effectiveness, then that will be 80, right? So the enemy uh, having like 66% reduced cost effectiveness will reduce the 80 instead of reducing the, the original 40, right? It, it, he will reduce like 66% of 80 is bigger than 66% of, of 40, right? Therefore, the more invest, the more you actually lose rather than investing in other sources of damage that do not get mitigated like that. So... That's currently a sad state of curses. Like unless uh, GGG changes the curse effectiveness, this is not a viable build. I don't recommend that. I mean, sure, it's it's super comfortable for mapping, but the moment you start fighting bosses, the moment you start fighting conquerors, guardian uh, bosses, things like that, your damage just goes to garbage. Like all of the super insane scaling only works on, in maps on, on like normal magic monsters. The, the, the higher rarity monsters, the unique uh, bosses and things like that actually get like some extra mitigation against you because of the inherent curse uh, effect resistance, right? Uh, but this build would be so cool otherwise. Like you can do so much shit. You can have uh, plus one. Uh, one to, normally you want like plus one to cold spells, uh, cold damage over time and trigger socketed spell. But you can also have plus one to level of all spells, which will increase the level of your curses. And then you can also double corrupt heretics veil. You can potentially have plus two to level of socketed AOE gems and plus two to level of curse gems, giving you a total of plus five. You can have a plus five heretics veil if you get really lucky. Uh, but don't hope for any enchant on it because you, know, have, have a, you need a lot of them, a lot of tries to get something like that. Uh, so Heretic's Veil for the plus one of Sacred Curses, that means every level you get for all of these curses that you're packing together and you're increasing them all together, the higher number you increase by a percentage, the bigger effect you get from the percentage increases to curse effectiveness and that just stacks together to create a, like an insane cascading effect. But as I said before, it's complete garbage against bosses. So that's why I'm just basically going to bin this character and sell these items because it completely failed and it's not worth doing. Uh, it's super easy. Like you start playing maps and you're like, wow, this is insane damage. Everything like I run through monsters and they melt in one second standing in the like or half a second or split second. They melt instantly. That's such an insane damage. Yes, on regular monsters, on bosses, it just your damage just gets, hot, cut, gets cut in half or even less, which is the opposite of what you want, right? You want like lower damage on the mo on regular monsters and higher damage on bosses. But unfortunately, this is not how it works. And uh, that's why this is kind of a failed experiment, but I still wanted to share that. And it, who knows if GGG changes how bosses are affected by curses or maybe changes how curse effectiveness works. Maybe it's like curse effectiveness makes it so that bosses uh, 
you know, maybe occultists get some node that bosses don't get uh, their curse effectiveness or something like they get for the hexproof thing. Something would have to change in order for this build to be really viable. But it was a really cool experiment nonetheless. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. You learned something along the way. See you next time.